I'm Dr. Monique Sims. I am the WIC Regional Breastfeeding Liaison for Contra Costa County. I'm also the director of a more excellent way health organization. Yeah, we want you guys to come on up toward the front. Everybody, just move up toward the front. Please. Yes, please. Come up toward the front. Because people, they're registering, they're coming in, but we want to honor those that have gotten here on time. Well, the more excellent way community baby shower it had its origin in Solano County and we uh, moved it to Contra Costa County or I should say expanded to Contra Costa County last year and this was the second year so the project is uh, has five phases the first phase is to develop a collaborative of health and social service organizations, partner with a predominantly African-American church. And the second phase is to teach the leaders about disparities in health in the African-American population, um, starting with breastfeeding. Uh, we also train uh, peer counselors, and that's uh, the third phase of peer counselor training. So we use the WIC loving support model to train community peers and how to help moms and dads. And we train both females and males in connecting the families uh, to health and social services that they might need. Some of the moms in the group um, breastfed, some of them had challenges and didn't, but wanted to come and just take it to another level with getting back. And so Ms. Cheryl Cox um, is one of those mothers. the group because I breastfed all three of uh, my adult children who are all now, now in their 20s and I have a grandson that was breastfed and for me it was just really important because I didn't have any support when I was breastfeeding. I didn't have anybody encouraging me so it was challenging but I, I stuck through it. All my children were breastfed until they were probably two and a half. So I, I really did enjoy it. It was really important and I wanted to I did everything natural with my children. Back then it was the big thing. You didn't get drugs or anything when you had babies. So breastfeeding was just, you know, part of that natural experience. So for us and our family, it was a blessing. And that's why I want to be part of this group. So thank you for the opportunity. I look forward to working with mothers. Yes. She's going to be a fabulous group counselor. Oh, shoot. Grace isn't here either. Grace is here? Oh, she's here. Oh, Miss Grace. Um, Miss Grace Madhu. Um, she has her baby here. Um, when everyone hears her testimony of how she has persevered to breastfeed this child, I mean, it is nothing but grace, like really, that she has sustained this. Um, so we just honor Miss Grace Madhu. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad to be here today. I'm really honored. Breastfeeding is one great thing. Breastfeeding is challenging. It's not easy, especially with this my kid and uh, my first daughter. I didn't find it so easy, but I know for some moms it's easy going. But I wanted to continue, even if it's so challenging. I've continued. He is on breast strike. But that, doesn't, that didn't stop me. I keep pumping, I keep feeding him, and I want to make sure he gets the best. Breast milk is very expensive. Nothing can replace it. If you're here, you're pregnant, have in mind that you have to breastfeed your baby because it's the most great thing you can do for that child. Thank you. Um, the third phase is to have the community baby shower. I should say the fourth phase is to have the community baby shower. And the community baby shower, we invite pregnant women from all over the county to that predominantly African-American church, um, as well as the father of the baby, the grandmother of the baby, trying to increase the support system of uh, African-American moms who 
are more likely to be single parenting, more likely to be low income, and need additional support and linkages to resources. Valeria, come on up. Oh, hi, Valeria. See, you win. You do win. You can take your car. You have a boy or girl? A girl. Come right over here and get something. Are we ready for your game? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, so the object of this game, you have to. In 30 seconds, the one with the most safety pins on the table without the rice wins. Go. Yeah. We just want the safety pins only. Take the safety pins out without the rice. And sit it to your right hand side on the table. Go, go. Y'all doing good. Uh oh. Somebody on the end is getting down on there, all you guys. Come on. Come on. They in there. program at University of California Berkeley and the state MCH director came into our uh, small class of graduates and and said that there were some uh, terrible statistics and they charged us as, as the new public health professionals to try to think of innovative ways to address the situation because there wasn't a lot being done and that is that African-American babies were dying at twice the rate of other babies before they reached their first birthday. And that at that time, African-American moms were dying at four times the rate of other mothers from labor and delivery complications. And I was, I just couldn't believe that I had never heard those statistics. And I was pretty sure that most African-Americans hadn't heard them. And so I wanted to educate our community about what was happening. Um, they say a community is only as healthy or strong as their infants. And so this was something that needed to get to um, African Americans to see um, what things we could do to, to help that, how we could improve the health of our babies and our moms. Um, men shy away from this subject a lot, um, but the guys, if you're gonna go into a men's group today, it's gonna be powerful, it's a man cave, no women allowed, we can't even transcribe or like, check the temperature in there or anything. This man's gonna help so much just again, bring that breastfeeding piece home because um, first of all, I should probably let his wife tell you a little bit more about him. You can present to your husband. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, 10 years ago, this man stole my heart. Nine years ago, really, but we've been married for almost 10 years on the 21st of this month. He still takes my breath away. <laughs> uh, but he has supported me with going to school, finishing my degree, getting my lactation certificate, um, breastfeeding three beautiful girls. I mean, he used to put the baby on my breast while I was sleeping. <laughs> so I wouldn't have to wake up. Um, he has been there for me. I mean, any man that's in this building that needs to know how to support a wife who is super driven, <laughs> going to work, school, and all this stuff. Um, this is the guy you go to because he has mastered it. And then, I love him and I appreciate him. And the way I found out that he knew about breastfeeding is one day I was counseling a mom on the phone, and he, when I hung up with her, he said, You forgot to tell her to pump every three hours. And I was like, What? You know this? I was like, We're going to get you certified. You're going to get some money. <laughs> So he knows about breastfeeding. He's been listening to me for nine years. So he knows just as much as me, probably if not more, from a different perspective. So I want to present this to my husband, Julian Mitchell. I mean, she just uh, pretty much said it all. I mean, it just. <laughs> Rest is best, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
wait a minute, Julian. You got You have to um, show, have to tell about how long you were breastfed and the little breastfeeding history in your family. You have a heritage of health in your family. In the African American community, it seems like the male is forgotten. It's like we are not needed because uh, she forgot to mention that initially we were going to formula feed. Breastfeed was not normal for us, even though, like she said, she was breastfed herself. Um, I've been told for years, you know, just kind of a joke, but it turns out it was real. You know, I thought my mom was teasing me. I was breastfed for five years. So it was, we kind of have a history of breastfeeding. But um, when we had our first child, it was, oh, we don't know what to do. We're going to breastfeed, we're going to formula feed. And the norm was, of course, formula, right? Everybody was doing it. Okay, it's not, it wasn't a social status thing for us. It was, that was normal for us. So when we went to... Um, I was, uh, it was WIC, but it was in uh, Riverside. It was actually a Latina that showed us um, this Lego. It was showing us, hey, this is what breath milk offered you, and this is what formula offered you. From there, you know, me being, you know, based off facts and logic, I was like, you know, it was normal males. I was like, okay, you know what? Let's do that. We're going to do that because that's the best thing. And number one, number two is if we don't have to make bottles. It's simple. You just put your breasts out and breastfeed that baby. And from there, uh, we were like just breastfed. We were, we were going, you know, spearhead on breastfeeding. And that's why I kind of joined because it was just, I want to make a difference in my community as African American. And I don't want to just be the guy that just says and doesn't do it. And this is one way I can do it by showing, hey, whether you're married or you boyfriend, girlfriend, baby mama, whatever your scenario is, you can be there to support your child and your woman or, or wife and you can help her through it. And a lot of reasons why women stop breastfeeding in the African-American community is because they lack support. And I'm not talking about their mothers. It's nothing like having the support of your husband or the person that you initially you know, had the baby with. It's nothing like that. Nothing can compare to that. And a lot of people take that away from the African-American man. It's almost like a, uh, uh, a destructive thing to kind of just, oh, you know, this is what you can do, and cast to the side. And so that's why I wanted to play. I wanted to be that pivotal role in my community as an African-American male to, to change that, to show, hey, this is how it's done. We can do it. Uh, and just, you know. All right, here we go. Singing to the baby. You got the baby outside the car, dude. 
Is that right, people? Not, is that right? That's not right. That's not right. Absolutely. I was very honored to have the assemblyman, Jim Frazier, not send a representative, but come himself and give words of encouragement to the participants of the shower, to the church, and to the collaborative, the uh, Contra Costa County African American Collaborative. He also brought certificates um, of recognition from the state Congress for the project. And he was very impressed so much that he, he came, right? Um, we had Mayor Wade Harper here, who also came to last year's shower. And he has a very interesting story. Uh, his mom was a single uh, parenting mom. Uh, I think by the time she was 19, she was on her third baby. And she was so ashamed and so depressed, she didn't want to name the baby. A little did she know, long story short, that it would be Wade Harper. And so I think that the baby shower has, has, has captivated him, has captured him. And he wants to be a supporter. He was there last year, he was there, here this year. And he's really an inspiration that there is hope um, to teenage moms that um, find themselves in a situation that the ba they don't know their baby's potential, right? And that they have a life afterward. So he was here and he gave his inspirational speech. But also, this shower is in Antioch, but the mayor of Concord wanted to be here, Tim Grayson. 
and he came and he he was just full of joy and smiles and you know exhortation and he said he, he made it a point to want to be here to say that Contra Costa County wide um, we're going to support uh, this project we're going to support moms and it's, it's still that not in my county type of attitude that he brought we're going to all rally around our babies being healthier. I, I want to ask uh, Mayor Wade Harper, we have a very distinguished guest here, and we want to honor anyone that thinks this program is important to them. He represents our district, and... Um... Okay, I'm back. Um, it is my honor to introduce a very good friend of mine, and he is the hardest working assembly member around. You'll see him everywhere. You'll see him working hard. Uh, you'll see his name on the ballot in November, and hopefully you'll do what I always do when I see his name. I check the box. <laughs> but his name is Jim Frazier. He's a former uh, uh, mayor of the city of Oakley, He's still residing in Oakley, and now he is our uh, assembly member. He belongs to us. Assembly member Jim Frazier. That's my good friend, Mayor Harper, Pastor Harper, who I absolutely adore. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for including me today in this program. And we wanted to put some penned word uh, to pe paper on this uh, wonderful day. When I drove up and I saw the uh, resource fair that's going out and all the cars in the parking lot, I was going, oh my gosh, I live in Oakley. I've never realized how well this church is organized. And uh, I think I'm going to have to come here occasionally just to... Because seeing the smiles and the happy people up here in that picture was just infectious. Infectious. But I want to thank you for, again for inviting me to be here today. Uh, I applaud the a more ex excellent Way of Health program and their collaborative partners, uh, including our host, Pastor Kirkland Smith of Grace Bible Fellowship Church. And for their steadfast efforts in, in continuing to support all of the community. Children of our state's most cherished resources and an access to prenatal and maternal care is essential to ensuring every child in our community receives a healthy start. When my children were born, I took a second job so my wife could stay home with our children for a year to breastfeed. And so I want you to know that I'm very, very supportive. It's my privilege to honor the collaborative's uh, de dedication to improving birth outcomes for all mothers. Uh, some of you might know I lost my daughter about 14 years ago in a car accident. So I want you, I implore you, to love your family and your children. Because you never know, we're never promised tomorrow. Okay? And I want to especially uh, encourage the African American mothers to be here today. Seeing that the support that you have and if there's anything that my office or I can do personally to also encourage uh, this effort, please use us as a resource. You know, we need to promote breastfeeding and educational programs, connecting families to health and social service programs. Your efforts in this community have made and will continue to make a very positive difference in the lives of children and families throughout the 11th Assembly District. And I'd like to present today uh, to Monique Sims Harper of the A More Excellent Way of Health program, a certificate, assembly certificate of recognition. And we don't give these out just like we can. These are something that people absolutely earn. And we want to recognize the program for their good work in the community, promoting health for people in our community. Thank you. The African American Church has similar um, missions as the Public Health Department. That is that they're trying to improve the health and well-being of communities. And so they were a logical partner as well because in the African American population, oftentimes church leaders have been uh, 
the, the, lead, the leaders in any kind of social change or social movement or behavioral change. When we contacted Pastor Kirkland Smith, he had seen the uh, information about the baby shower in the paper. And last year, he, he said he began to pray for the shower at Solomon Temple. And then he made up in his mind that with the Mew Project or not, he was going to have that same program here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Bible Fellowship, where our theme is It's All About the Love of Jesus. We have had uh, an honor uh, to be able to host this event today. I want everyone to make yourselves at home. We literally, uh, honestly believe everyone that comes through these doors, it's not by coincidence. We consider you family, so we hope you enjoy uh, the program today. Uh, this isn't a community center, this is a house of worship. Amen. This is the house where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. And when Dr. Sims asked us to host the event, uh, it was something we had a desire to do and prayed about. We welcomed it with open arms. Uh, we didn't know that we were going to have an opportunity just to um, uh, just enhance this day with just a little bit of worship and a word of encouragement. So what we want to do, if you all would allow us, just want to have a word of prayer. We're going to have our praise team. I just lift up a song of praise just to create an atmosphere where we invoke the presence of God here. You know, we this African-American baby shower is nothing less than incredible. Uh, first and foremost, hopefully you'll get some visual shots. Um, I, we saw, or I read of Solomon Temple hosting the event last year, uh, read about it, um, was trying my best to get there, wasn't able to make it, but from what I read, it was a tr not just a tremendous success as it relates to um, African-American mothers and uh, the fathers and, and their families supporting it, the wealth of information that was provided. But um, I, had a, I just had a burden in my, my, my spirit that we wanted to do something like that here in Antioch. So I had uh, mentioned to a couple people that our goal next year was to not try to reinvent the wheel, but to do a Me Too, a community event similar to what the county was providing. And lo and behold, I get a call from Dr. Sims saying that um, it had been placed upon their hearts uh, for us to potentially host the event. And I, I, I was just in awe of how God sometimes will not just speak something to you, but touch the hearts of someone else that you don't know, they don't know what the burden was on your heart. So it was an immediate yes, a laugh. And you know, so we've been working for months to make this this event special, but what this has become is an event where hundreds of uh, African-American men, women, children, and then just a host of others, uh, whites and Hispanics and Asians are partnering with the African-American community because it's showing that, that we're really, all of our blood is red and, uh, and people care about people and they're showing through all of the nonprofit uh, programs that they are as well concerned about the health and the wellness uh, and the holistic um, desires for, for African Americans as a whole. And that to me, seeing all the different vendor booths outside is probably more edifying than anything is seeing how many people are vested in uh, the positive future that this whole community is desiring for the African American uh, families.